Jillian Michaels became known for her aggressive approach to coaching on The Biggest Loser, from obscenity-ridden screams to pushing people to their physical breaking points. But some of her controversial antics have continued since leaving the show. This is the shady truth about Jillian Michaels. And rebounding, plateau. What do you do? You know, the, you do the same thing you do every other week. You beat the hell out of them. Jillian Michaels has always been known for speaking her mind, and while she sometimes gets away with it, the public had a bone to pick with the fitness trainer when she chose to go after national treasure Lizzo. The Biggest Loser star found herself swimming in controversy following a January 2020 interview with the BuzzFeed News morning show, AM to DM. It all started when host Alex Berg praised A-listers like Lizzo and Ashley Graham and said, I love that they're putting images out there that we normally don't normally get to see of bodies that we don't get to see being celebrated. However, Michaels didn't have the best response and replied, why are we celebrating Lizzo body. Why aren't we celebrating her music? Because it isn't going to be awesome if she gets diabetes. Like, I love her music. My kid loves her music. But there's never a moment where I'm like, and I'm so glad that she's overweight. Why is it my job to care about her weight? Almost immediately, critics slammed Michaels for being fat phobic and disguising it as concern. Eventually, the personal trainer took to Twitter and issued an apology, but unfortunately, the damage was already done. Think of me as though we're in AA, right? And I'm the person that's been sober 20 years. Jillian Michaels made quite an impression during her time as a coach on The Biggest Loser. As a 2016 article in The Guardian noted, fitness experts have repeatedly called Michaels' practices on The Biggest Loser into question. Go, 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 John! We gotta really dig deep here, buddy. Okay? Come on. Come on! Push! For instance, as the publication noted, Michaels often appeared to go too far on the show and even caused someone to dehydrate so severely that they urinated blood. Meanwhile, eating disorder physician Dr. Ed Tyson told The Guardian, "...contestants are absolutely at a greater risk of developing eating disorders as a result of being on the show. It was also revealed that many contestants have simply regained all the weight that they lost." As the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases revealed to The New York Times in 2016, as the years went by and the numbers on the scale climbed, the contestants' metabolisms did not recover. It was as if their bodies were intensifying their effort to pull the contestants back to their original weight. I just beat him until all his walls were down. Oh, rip it, go rip it. Oh, Come on, let me hear it! Oh. When it comes to some of the questionable weight loss tactics used on The Biggest Loser, it seems that even Jillian Michaels had a moment of realization. Speaking to the Daily Mail about her third and final departure from the series in 2014, Michaels revealed, I asked for changes and they said no, so in my opinion, I believe it was their choice. I was willing to stay if certain changes were made and they said no. Michaels had started to feel guilty over the weight loss of some of the show's contestants, such as Rachel Fredrickson. A Fredrickson's whopping 155-pound weight loss, Michaels told the Daily Mail, I thought she lost too much weight without a doubt. I felt actually pretty ashamed. I've come to a point in my career where I have to have control and that's where I'm out. Although we're currently living in a world where people of all shapes are finally being celebrated in the media, fat shaming is something that still hasn't entirely been erased by everyone. As Vice puts it, using health concerns as cover for fat phobia is something fat people have heard before, and this attitude actually contributes to the anti-fat bias that prevents fat people from receiving proper mental and physical health care. Michaels appeared on The Wendy Williams Show in January 2020 and told the audience, You know, there was so much fat shaming for such a long time that now the pendulum has swung to a place where it's like, you are 250 pounds and you're owning it. Go!" She continued, "...that would be like handing an alcoholic a drink. It's like, you're an alcoholic. This is fantastic. Here's a vodka tonic." Understandably, people were not happy about Michael's comments. The Biggest Loser host Bob Harper told Us Weekly, "...I could never even think where she comes from. I'm never going to give my opinion to anyone that's not asking for it. It's none of my business." When she's not causing widespread anger with her comments in the media, Jillian Michaels has kept busy feuding with Andy Cohen. As it turns out, the beef between these two has been going on for years, having started when Michaels was Cohen's guest on his Bravo talk show, Watch What Happens Live. Speaking to Us Weekly in 2019, the Biggest Loser alum dished, "...we've not been friendly for years. I did his show once and it was a really awful experience. Extremely rude. Condescending and unprofessional. At the end of it, I was like, I gotta tell you, that was a truly hideous experience. Like in all the years I've been doing this, nothing like this has ever happened." Michaels revealed that she was getting over the stomach flu when Cohen asked her to do shots on the show. The beef apparently started when Cohen thought Michaels was being dismissive. The situation definitely seems like it was blown out of proportion, but it's not the only time these two have butted heads. In 2018, Michaels decided to trash talk the Real Housewives franchise, of which Andy Cohen is an executive producer. Speaking to Life & Style, Michaels said, "...I hate that. It's like the franchise was created by someone that hates women." In reply, Cohen told The Hollywood Reporter, "...this is the woman who screamed at people for a living on The Biggest Loser. She should stay in her own lane." 
If there's one thing Jillian Michaels should consider changing, it's her tendency to share her opinions no matter what. The reason why Michaels' remarks sometimes leave people seeing red is because her pearls of wisdom often come across a little rude. For instance, in December 2019, Michaels posted an Instagram video about veganism, in which the trainer explained, I'm an animal lover, and I also acknowledge that being vegan is one of the best things we can do for the environment. Michaels continued, But I cannot tell you that any of the research I have ever done would suggest that being completely vegan is healthy. And the reason for that, in particular as women, is every month, and I don't need to be particularly gross, women lose iron, so it's very easy for us on a vegan diet to become anemic. While everyone is certainly entitled to their own opinions, Michaels then suggested what vegans should be indulging in meat every so often or eating eggs. Naturally, some of Michaels' fans weren't happy with her not very vegan-friendly advice, which was immediately labeled as ignorant. Although Jillian Michaels gets flack from her former fans, the fitness coach has also had some celebrities call her out for her questionable behavior, too. One specific comment that really sent A-list critics over the top was when Michaels shared her thoughts on the keto diet. In an interview with Women's Health, the personal trainer said, I don't understand. Like, why would anyone think this is a good idea? You don't eat processed sugar. You don't eat processed grains. And to make a very long story short, avoid the keto diet. Common sense. Of course, almost immediately, stars bounce back with their own thoughts about Michael's unpopular opinions. Longtime enemy Andy Cohen joked on Watch What Happens Live, tonight's Jack Hole of the Day goes to Jillian Michaels. Don't feel bad, keto diet. A lot of people think Jillian Michaels is a bad idea. Another celebrity who clearly wasn't a fan of Michaels' diet thoughts was NBC weather anchor Al Roker, who tweeted, so Jillian Michaels says keto is a bad idea. This from a woman who promoted on-camera bullying, deprivation, manipulation, and more weekly in the name of weight loss. Now those sound like bad ideas. The fitness expert had her own bone to pick with the haters and responded on Twitter, writing, I have an idea. How about a civil intelligent debate on the Six Keys book and keto, instead of personal attacks and name-calling? I'm also a motivator, and I know you guys can do this. Jillian Michaels was known to push people to their limits on The Biggest Loser, but to actually cheat on the show seems like a downright shady move, especially for a fitness trainer. According to Yahoo Entertainment, during one week of her team's competition in 2013, Michaels apparently decided to break the rules, resulting in her entire team being penalized. The show's host, Allison Sweeney, told the contestants before that week's weigh-in began, "...before you all step on the scale, there is something important that needs to be addressed." Last week, Jillian gave caffeine supplements to each member of her team without a doctor's permission. Although Michaels was given the opportunity to offer up an apology, she ultimately decided against it and defended her rule-breaking by saying, "...I stand by my opinion. A caffeine supplement is significantly healthier than unlimited amounts of coffee." While it's definitely reasonable to show concern for your child's well-being, automatically assuming that someone will have issues with eating is pretty problematic. However, Jillian Michaels shared some surprising comments about her daughter's relationship with food in an interview with Women's Health in 2020. Speaking about that 9-year-old Lucenzia, Michaels bluntly declared, "...I know she is going to struggle with food. I know it. She will literally eat and then say I'm hungry. So I'll try to talk to her about it. I know what she's doing because I have that issue with food. I used it as a way to bond with my dad. He was overweight, so one of the only ways we knew how to relate was to eat. While nobody can really know what's going on behind closed doors, it's possible that Lucenzia's issues with food stem from what she hears the public say about her mom. In an interview with People, Michaels got real about leaving The Biggest Loser and said, "...millions of people have this warped negative perception of me." As it turns out, Michaels' profession has even impacted her personal life with her children. Recalling a moment about her caffeine pill scandal on The Biggest Loser, the personal trainer revealed that when she picked Lucenzia up from camp, she heard her daughter recall being bullied. As Michaels told People, "...I know who your mom is. She's a cheater. I saw it on TV." Ultimately, it looks like one of the most significant issues the public seems to have with Jillian Michaels is her opinion on political correctness and diet culture. Living in a world where body positivity is a message that everyone would like to spread, Michaels might want to start keeping certain comments to herself. Speaking to Women's Health in 2020, Michaels was asked if she believes The Biggest Loser would work in our society today. She explained, "...I think the world has shifted to a place where that format and messaging is considered fat-shaming. But it isn't, and it's not meant to be. I think we're politically correct to the point of endangering people." Michaels continued to say, "...yes, we want to be inclusive of everyone and respect that everyone comes in all different shapes and sizes, but obesity in itself is not something that should be glamorized." After Michaels' interview was released to the public, she was immediately met with criticism. As NBC News reported, people were quick to lash out on Twitter, with various celebrities even chiming in with their two cents. Actress Jamila Jamil responded on Twitter and wrote, "...elitist ignorance from a renowned longtime bully of fat people. Don't just shame and blame. Cheap food, which most can afford, is full of hormones and sugars. Many work too many jobs to have time slash money to work out. It seems that Michaels is always going to divide opinion with her ideas about weight." Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebrities are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.